cannot, I will not oversee, supervise, forced, brutal eviction against the people of Kenya. That I will not, and I can't. President William Ruto and I on the campaign trail gave a solemn undertaking to the people of Kenya that under our administration, that will never happen. So when I was asked to oversee brutal, inhuman eviction against innocent people without notice, without compensation, without due regard to what the Constitution says, I found it very, very difficult, and I rescued myself and allowed the CS for Interior, the Head of Public Service, the PS for Internal Security, to proceed. If that is the reason why Regadi Gashagwa should be impeached as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and sent home for refusing to undermine the Constitution, for saying no to brutal and inhuman eviction of poor Kenyans, let it be. Diverting materials meant for construction of Kilifi Malidi Highway to Tamaka Private Load to Vipingo Beach Resort. Again, I said Vipingo Beach Resort belongs to the estate of the late Governor Gashagwa. The facts are as follows. King Charles III visited Kenya between 30th October 2023 and 3rd November 2024. During his state visit, one of the designated places where King Charles III was to visit was Kuritu Marine Conservancy, which shares a road with the Vipingo Beach Resort. And it's a public load, by the way, it's not a private load. I have an extra copy of the program of the state visit to Kenya by King Charles III, marked RG, which at page 13 on items 63 and 64 shows his departure and arrival at Kuritu Marine Conservancy. As I was walking around, I slept there. Uh, I think two, three weeks before the arrival of the king. And as you all know, I walk every morning. And as I walked on that road, I found there was a lot of activity and tarmac was going on. I was very happy and I asked what was happening. And I was told that the king himself, the third, will be coming. So, like all other residents of that area, we are very indebted to King Charles III that this was done very speedily. Regarding Gashagwa never called anybody <laughs> to do this road. In fact, I'm informed that this road is donor funded, the one to Kilifi. And there is a component of corporate social responsibility. And I have learned after I have inquired that. Um, These people of, um, uh, there is a, there is a, that road is called Takawungu Shariani Vipingo. It's off the main road. And uh, I am made to understand that uh, Kuruinu, Kuruitu Marine Conservancy, Vipingo Secondary School, Shariani Primary School, among other stakeholders, including a, park, a, mark, a public market, applied to Kenha to be considered for corporate social responsibility. And I think the issue of the king hastened that request. And that's why I said we are grateful to the king. Again, I invite evidence to show that I influenced that road. In any case, I would like to know the member of parliament for that area how he will vote in this motion. He should be a very happy man. If Deputy President Rigadi Gashagu occasioned a tarmac road to be done in his constituency, he should vote for me. But I didn't. And when I went there, that Shariani market, people are very happy with that road. Because I walk there in the morning when I sleep there. People are very happy with that road. The secondary school there, the boys and girls are very happy. The primary schools are there. And again, 
contrary to the assertion by the Honorable Mutuse, it's not a private road, it's a public road. And it is serving many people, a primary school, a secondary school, a market, and a whole community, including the family of the estate of the late governor, Dr. Kashawa. We are just beneficiaries of good deeds by our government that were hastened by the arrival of King, of His Majesty the King, the third. Undermining the president and the cabinet by allegedly making contradictory public statements from the position taken by cabinet regarding the evacuation of the people residing along Nairobi River. To start with, for the record, President William Ruto has never complained to me that I have undermined him. If he has told that to Honorable Mutuse, I would like to know that he has complained to Honorable Mutuse that his deputy has undermined him. Article 147 of the Constitution provides the deputy president shall be the principal assistant to the president and shall deputize for the president in the execution of the president's functions. Article 28, which states that every person has inherent dignity and the right to have that dignity respected and protected. Article 29C, which states that every person has the right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be subjected to any form of violence from either public or private sources. Section 152G1 of the Land Act, which states that notwithstanding any provisions to the contrary in this act or in any other written law, all eviction shall be carried out in strict accordance with the following procedures. A. Be preceded by proper identification of those taking part in the eviction or demolitions. B. Be preceded by the presentation of the formal authorizations for the action. C where groups of people are involved, government officials or their representatives to be present during an eviction, D, to be carried out in a manner which respects the dignity, the right to life and security of those affected, include special measures to ensure effective protection to groups and people who are vulnerable, such as women, children and elderly and persons with disabilities. F, include special measures to ensure that there is no arbitrary deprivation of property all positions as a result of the eviction. G, include mechanisms to protect property and possessions left behind involuntarily from destruction. H, respect the principles of necessity and proportionality during the use of force and give the affected person the first priority to demolish and salvage their property. Critically, our constitution provides at section uh, 147.2 that first, the deputy president shall perform the functions conferred by these constitutions and any other functions of the president as the president may assign. Pass one to Article 3 of the Constitution. I, as well as every citizen of Kenya and state of public officers, have the obligation to respect, uphold, and defend the Constitution in performing any of my functions. The national values and principles of governance contained in Article 10 of the Constitution by those state organs, public officers, and all persons, including myself as the Deputy President, wherever we make or implement public policy decisions. <clears throat> in relation to this matter, these national values and principles include the rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people, human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized. Adherence to these principles became extremely important when we, as state officers, are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced evictions that would be contrary to our constitution and international law. While campaigning with the president, and subsequently, when I was sworn in as Deputy President, you can remember, I promised as a key pillar to the Kenya Kwanzaa government that there will be no forced and unlawful evictions and that all evictions shall be human and entail legal composition. 
You remember my inauguration speech. I said never again shall this administration carry out inhuman evictions in a brutal manner as was done in the previous administration. I and my office, the office of the Deputy President, have undertaken extensive engagement with all parties in regard to the cabinet decision on eviction, which I fully support, including the Nairobi River, which is an entity under the ODP and County Government of Nairobi. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we as state officers are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced evictions that would be contrary to our constitution and international law. Guideline number six of the United Nations General Assembly, guidelines for the implementation of the rights to adequate housing prohibits forced evictions and the state should ensure that any eviction under domestic law are fully compliant with international law. The guidelines further require meaningful engagement with communities to ensure that the rights of residents are implemented cooperatively without the need for eviction procedures or police enforcement. I have supported enforcement, implementation of cabinet directives on the eviction, safe for the fact that on being informed that each person deciding at the Robbie River was being evicted and paid only 10,000 shillings, which I and many other Kenyans felt inadequate compensation for eviction. I insisted that the government should abide by constitutional dictates and international norms while implementing any cabinet decision, including eviction, and maintain the dignity of citizens of Kenya facing evictions. My statements did not and cannot be construed to undermining the president because the president, like me, so to defend the very constitution. I hope I'm very clear. Am I clear? I cannot, I will not oversee, supervise, forced, brutal eviction against the people of Kenya. That I will not, and I can't. President William Ruto and I on the campaign trail gave a solemn undertaking to the people of Kenya that under our administration, that will never happen. So when I was asked to oversee brutal, inhuman eviction against innocent people without notice, without compensation, without due regard to what the Constitution says, I found it very, very difficult. And I rescued myself and allowed the CS for Interior, the Head of Public Service, the PS for Internal Security to proceed. If that is the reason why Regadi Gashagwa should be impeached as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya and sent home for refusing to undermine the Constitution, for saying no to brutal and inhuman eviction of poor Kenyans, let it be.